A healthy six-year-old girl sustained a close-range shotgun injury to the left inferior hemi-abdomen and groin. Multiple injuries occurred, including soft tissue and hollow fiscus injury, and an iliac crest bone fracture. The patient went to theatre on hospital stay day one for debridement of the wound, laparotomy, and an end-to-end -end colonic anastomosis. The patient returned to theatre on day two and three for further washout and debridement of the wound. The iliac crest bone fracture did not require any form of definitive fixation. Temporary closure of the abdominal and proximal groin wound was achieved using a negative pressure wound therapy. The problem list includes a paediatric patient with a large 22 by 12 centimeter soft tissue defect of the abdomen and proximal groin, an 8 by 8 centimeter full thickness abdominal wall defect and a traumatic groin hernia. How would you face the case? Option A, a pedicled contralateral VRAM, vertical rectus abdominal muscle flap with a biological mesh, or option B, a composite fascia cutaneous anterior lateral thigh and fascia lata free flap together with a thermal regeneration template to cover the remainder of the groin wound. You chose option B. Good day. My name is Edward Bouchel. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Welcome to Face the Case. I would like to thank PRS Go for this opportunity and I would like to congratulate the authors on their presentation of a pediatric patient with a traumatic abdominal wall injury. In summary, this patient sustained a traumatic injury to the left lower quadrant of the abdomen, including skin, muscle, and fascia, full thickness defects to the anterior abdominal wall, as well as inguinal ligament, and a soft tissue defect of the upper thigh. The patient was brought to the hospital, sequential debridements were done, colonic primary repair was done, and then on day four, a composite chimeric ALT TFL fascial free flap was done from the contralateral leg to reconstruct the cutaneous defect of the anterior abdominal wall, the fascial defects of the anterior abdominal wall, and the inguinal ligament. On the sixth post-operative day, a colonic leak occurred requiring a diverting colostomy. The abdominal wall reconstruction remained intact. In this case of a traumatic anterior abdominal wall hernia, factors to be considered which will guide your reconstruction include, one, what structures are missing, two, what underlying remaining structures need definitive vascular coverage. Three, what is the degree of wound contamination? Importantly, we must consider the contamination of the wound. In this case, the traumatic enterotomy results in a contaminated wound that precludes the use of synthetic meshes for reconstruction of the fascial component of the anterior abdominal wall. A single stage reconstruction of the anterior abdominal wall using free tissue transfers of skin and fascia is an option, but does carry significant risks in a contaminated field of, an, of a vascular anastomotic leak, specifically at the external iliac vessels. This can be catastrophic. Pedicled options, while not always optimal, can result in less risk to the patient in the short term. The best choice usually takes into con consideration the stability of the patient, the contamination of the wound, and ultimately the components of the anterior abdominal wall that are missing. In most cases of abdominal wall hernias, especially traumatic hernias, delayed closure is an option. Thank you for watching Face the Case.